Why, why would that be? Um, why would that be the case? Could you give me an argument? Yes, Steve. Okay, good. And why is that? Okay, so uh, if not, it's not an upper bound, then there is an X, so maybe there is an X in A, such that X is uh, bigger than three halves. Uh, we've already verified that, uh, that, okay, so it's not an upper bound, then there's an, something is strictly bigger than three halves. Then what would be true, Steve is saying then X squared is going to be bigger than 3 halves squared, which would be what? Bigger than 2. So you can check that that's bigger than 2. And then x could not have been an a, which is a contradiction. X is so x is an a, a not an a contradiction. OK, now I just did this to illustrate a point. I mean, to illustrate this, this uh, how, how we really know this. Um, we're not going to, you know, carefully check everything. I want to point out also, this is another shorthand that you use, and you should not use on your writing, in your homework. This symbol, which means what? Implies. So in formal writing, you should write out implies. Okay. Okay, so this shows that, in fact, three halves is an upper bound. If there was any question about it, um, we can check it. And this property is just a property uh, that uh, it follows from the, the, the fact that uh, multiplication plays nice with order. Okay. Yes? Uh, uh, I don't see, I don't see, okay, so the question was, for those listening at home, uh, do we need something to exclude negative numbers? Uh, no, because if x is bigger than 3 halves, if there is an x that's bigger than 3 halves, x is actually positive. Yeah. So we don't have to worry too much about that. I mean, then, then, then multiply, you'll be basically multiplying on both sides by something positive. Yeah, we're 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 actually, we're, I mean, all we're verifying is whether, is whether three halves is an upper bound, and if it's not, then there's something bigger than three halves, which is already already positive. Yeah, we will have to worry about those negative issues when in, in a little bit when I start talking about cuts. Okay. Okay. Good. So we have an upper bound. Let's uh, let's define least upper bound. So the, the least upper bound better satisfy two properties. Just take a wild guess what the least upper bound. It's a number that what? Is an upper bound and? It's the least, least of all of them. OK, very good. So let's, let's say that formally. So if there is a, let's call it alpha in S such that First property, alpha is an upper bound. I'm abbreviating upper bound now by UB uh, of V. E. And second property is, um, what, what does it mean to be the least upper bound? Anything greater? Let's see if two is an upper bound. Certainly, things that are bigger than two are still upper bounds. OK, good. So you want to go the other way. So if anything is smaller than alpha, then it better not be an upper bound. Excellent. So we'll write that down. And if uh, gamma less than a implies gamma is not an upper bound for e. 
then alpha is called the least upper bound. And we often abbreviate this by LUB, LUB, that's the least upper bound of E. And actually, there's a, a name that's even more used than, than, than this, and that is, we sometimes call this the supremum of E. And we write alpha equals sup E. Okay, the supremum of E is the least upper bound of E. Okay. Okay. Uh, and of course, the word kind of uh, suggests that to, to be supreme means to be bigger than everything, right? But it's it's the least biggest thing. Okay. So it's it's sort of what might be at that endpoint if the, if there were something there. Okay. Okay. So let's explore that concept a little bit as well. Which sets have suprema? Let's do some examples here. OK, so let's just take uh, throughout all these examples, let's take, um, I'll just let s be the rationals, s equals q, OK? Throughout all the examples. So um, let's consider the following set. Uh, what if I take the set E consisting of these numbers? Uh, one half, one, two. Does it have a supremum? What is it? It's two. Justify that for me. Justify that for me. Why is two? First of all, is two an upper bound? Malouse. Very clearly. Good, it's an upper bound. Great, why is it the least upper bound in terms of the properties? Harris. Good, does everybody, so, the, so what Harris said was, suppose there were an upper bound less than two, let's call it gamma, well then gamma wouldn't be bigger than two. <laughs> and therefore it's not an upper bound for this set. Everybody happy with that? Okay, good. So we so um, let's generalize a little bit. This is one example, but um, suppose I throw in another number. Um, suppose I throw in the number 1.5. What's the supremum? Two. Suppose I throw in another number like um, 15. What's the supremum? 15. Okay. I could keep throwing in numbers. Uh, can you generalize? Can you come? Can you can you come up with a maybe a more general statement about collections of, let's say, finite numbers of things? Do finite collection of objects have a supremum? Yes, it's, it's the thing that is biggest. It's the last one on this number line, right? OK? So in fact, you can see that finite, so we'll just notice this observation, finite sets have uh, soups, have a supremum. Have a soup. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's 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 take some other sets that are not finite. How about um, let's look at the set of all rationals that are negative. Q minus the negative rationals. What um, what's a the, First of all, does this have a supremum? What is the supremum? Zero. Zero? Really? Why? How do you know that? How do you know that there isn't like some eensy beensy 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 number that's just just to the left of zero that's bigger than all the negative rationals? You can find a negative number bigger.